Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video I'm going to be wrapping up all of the books that I read in the month of November. Okay, so November was a big reading month. I kind of burned myself out on creating so much content in October. Took a little bit of a, a breather from that in November. I still created content, but it took a step back from quite as much as I had been doing, and it was nice. Instead, I read a lot. NaNoWriMo was happening. If you were participating, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below how you did. Did you meet your goal? I did not, which I'm not surprised, to be honest. I set my goal at trying to read 15,000 pages, which I knew was going to be a stretch for me, and in fact, it was too much of a stretch, but I'm okay with it. I got closer than I was even expecting, to be honest. I got to 12,762 pages, so I was a little more than 2,000 pages under my goal, and you know what? I'm really happy with that number. I think I read more than I have any other month this year, and it was a fun time just to kind of push myself and see how much I could do. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you participate participated in NaNoWriMo, how that went for you. Did you meet your goal? Did you have a good time? Did you read more than you expected or less? Uh, I mean, I think success is just having fun and trying to push yourself to do something a little bit different, in my opinion. So as always, my wrap ups begin with my reading stats for the month. I'm a stats nerd. I like to talk about these. So I always do this. Anybody who is not interested is welcome to skip forward to where I start actually reviewing the books. However, before we get into my stats, I do have one other order of business that I need to cover here. And that is the fact that the HarperCollins Union is still on strike. If you watched my my mid-month wrap-up, you might have noticed I mentioned this. There was a book that I had read that I was withholding a review of because of the strike. They have been asking reviewers to not review HarperCollins titles until they receive a fair bargain. I will link their Twitter in the video description if you want to go and check out some of what they're saying. What they're asking for is very reasonable. We're 15 days into the strike and so far there has been nary a word from HarperCollins, so I am hoping that in the near future we will hear from them. Meanwhile, I have started doing doing a vlog style video reviewing all of the HarperCollins books that I am reading during the strike. So in support of the HarperCollins union workers who are asking for fair wages, not even that big of an increase to be honest, but uh, fair wages and better diversity policies, I am not reviewing HarperCollins titles until that strike has been resolved. So in light of that, there are two HarperCollins titles that I have read this month. I will not be reviewing them in this video and will not be posting reviews of them until that strike has been resolved, but I did film a clip for another video where I have reviews. So once the strike is over, I will post it and you can see my thoughts on these and any additional HarperCollins titles that I read in the month of December. Those two books are The Lights on Knockbridge Lane by Rowan Parrish and Counterfeit Courtship by Sinithia Williams. They are both Harlequin titles and Harlequin is under the umbrella of HarperCollins. So, so go support the strike and the HarperCollins union and stay tuned. Hopefully relatively soon I'll be able to post a video with my reviews of those books. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into my reading stats for the month. In the month of November, I read a total of 43 books. Wow, that number is really, really high. However, I will note that I read quite a number of manga volumes for a video project. And so that is contributing to the high number. But I also just read a lot, like I said, with NaNoWriMo. I I read 12,491 pages, which is an average page count of 416 pages per day, which is, I think, not the highest average pages per day I've ever read, but it's pretty close to the highest average pages <laughs> per day I've read. So I read a lot this month, even more than I usually do. Taking a closer look at those books, 19 of them were either ARCs, advanced reader copies, or books that were sent to me for review. 10 of them were graphic novels or manga. I told you I read quite a few. I read a couple graphic novels, eight volumes of manga. That's definitely contributing to the number of items on this list. 17 of the books that I read this month were either indie titles or from a small press. Next year, I think I'm going to try to separate out the small press versus indie. Eight of the books that I read were translated. And if you guessed that those were the manga translated from Japanese, you would be correct. And I had one reread. 
I did listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I read a lot in all different formats this month. 19 of the books that I read were audiobooks, so a little less than half. 14 of the books that I read were physical, and 10 of them were ebooks. Taking a closer look at those audiobooks, 12 of them are what I term shelf, which means that I had a physical copy on my TBR and I got it off via audio or primarily via audio. Some of these were blended reads where I was partially reading along physically, partially listening to it. And in terms of where those audiobooks are coming from, this month eight of them were from Audible, one of them was from my library, six of them were from Libra FM, three of them were audio review copies from NetGalley, and one of them was an audiobook from Book of the Month. They were doing a beta test of selling audiobooks, and I offered to beta test, purchased an audiobook through them. I am not going to be buying any other audiobooks from them unless they make some significant changes. Their player only goes up to two times speed, which is annoying, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to pay for it. But um, I did have one audiobook from Book of the Month Club. Next up, let's take a look at age demographics. This month, 30 of the books that I read were targeted at an adult audience. This is pretty typical for me. Nine of the books that I read were targeted at a YA audience. Four of the books that I read were targeted at a middle grade audience, and I did not read any children's books, at least ones that I'm actively reviewing. Next, let's take a look at publication date. The earliest published work that I read in November was from 2007, and in total I read 18 backlist titles. You will note that this is the first month that my backlist is saying pre-2022 instead of pre-2021 because I read my very first 2023 book in November. So I read 18 books that were published prior to 2022. I read 24 2022 releases and I read one 2023 release. Next, let's look at author demographics. I make it a point to prioritize books by marginalized authors, and part of how I keep myself accountable to my goals for that is by tracking them every month. Every month my goal is to read about 50% from Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors, and this month I did great with that. 55.8% of the books that I read were from Black, Indigenous, or person of color authors, which is great, and every month my goal is to read at least 25% from LGBTQIAP plus authors, and and in the month of November, I read 30.2% from openly queer authors. Next is genre. And this is interesting. I read a lot, a lot from my top two genres. In fact, they are tied for first place. I read 15 fantasy books and 15 romances. Don't know that I've seen that happen before. In terms of subcategories, nine of those were contemporary romances and six of them were speculative romances. Speculative romance is going to be your sci-fi, fantasy, or paranormal. I also read six sci-fi books, two general fiction, two contemporary fiction, one horror, one nonfiction, and one thriller. Lastly, let's take a look at my star ratings. And this month we're back to what is a little more typical for me. In October, I had an unusual month with ratings. This month has looked a little bit more normal. In the month of November, one book got one star. I did not give any books one and a half stars. Four books got two stars. One book got two and a half stars. Five books got three stars two books got three and a half stars, 14 books got four stars. We had a lot of four star reads this month. Eight books got four and a half stars, five books got five stars, and three books got six stars. And in my personal rating scale, a six star read is what I give to a favorite of the year. I had three of them this month, which is very exciting. My average rating for November was a 3.9, which is pretty great. Lastly, taking a look at my 2022 Challenge TBR, I did not make any more progress this month, although today, December 1st, I finished a book for this, and I am actively working on a project to see if I can make some more progress before the end of the year. Um, but I have currently read six out of the eight classics on my challenge TBR and four out of the eight SFF books, at least as of the end of November. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and move on and talk about all the books that I read. For my end of month wrap ups, I begin with my DNFs and then talk about all the books that I read, starting with lowest rated, moving up to highest rated books. Some of these books I talked about in my mid month wrap up, which I will link up above for books that I talked about there. I'm just going to tell you the book and the star rating. If you want to hear any detailed thoughts, I'm going to direct you to that video. First up, let's talk about my DNFs. I had two of them this month and one of them I talked about in my mid month wrap up. 
up. That was this graphic novel that is a biography of Einstein. Did not end up loving this, so I DNF'd it. Y'all, please don't come for me for this, but I also ended up DNFing One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Okay, listen, I have read both of Casey McQuiston's other books and I have enjoyed their other books. One Last Stop I wasn't even going to read but it was available as an audio influencer copy from Libra FM a while like last year so I thought well I might as well download it and at some point I'll listen to it and this was the month. I always felt a little skeptical because I am not the biggest fan of time travel, time skip type romances. So even going into this, I didn't really think it would be for me, but I have enjoyed some of their other books. I like the fact that it's a sapphic romance. I thought, you know what, let me give it a try. I read 50% of this book and listen, I was not wrong. I just did not care. I did not care at all about the romance between the characters. I found some of the side characters to be irritating. And I also agree with some criticisms that the girl stuck in time on the train, because that's kind of the premise of the story, feels like a very passive character because of it. And then when I was like, I think I'm gonna DNF this. Let me look at Goodreads reviews. I saw this review from Mari from My Name is Mari Nez, and she talked about kind of the white saviorism of it all. And I was like, yeah, that too. Okay. That's like, that was enough for me. Like I wasn't having a good time and she didn't really love it. So I was like, eh, okay, I don't feel bad. I'm going to DNF this. So I ended up DNFing it. I know a lot of people have really loved it. It was, it was not for me. With that said, let's go ahead and talk about all the books that I did finish reading. And we will begin with my one star. <laughs> I talked about this in a live stream at some point. I don't remember which one. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I don't often give one stars. It is not a frequent rating that I give, but I just, this, this wasn't good. It's a short story. Amazon periodically will come out with these collections of short stories where they'll get a bunch of popular authors together and have them write a short story around some kind of a theme. And they're really fun. They're free if you're an Amazon Prime member and I just enjoy them especially if they bring on authors that I like. And they have this new collection that just released. It's got a few of my favorite authors. I haven't listened to them yet so probably in December I'll like pick up some of the other ones. I just listened to the first two in the collection and the first one <laughs> it wasn't great. It wasn't, it, I mean, not even it wasn't great. It wasn't good. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, I'm so happy for you, but I did not. This is The Garden by Tomi Champion Ariemi, the author of Children of Blood and Bone. I think this is her first attempt at writing for adults, and she wrote this short story that sounds like it would be really interesting, but it's not, I promise you, it's not. It's about a woman who is traveling in Brazil, trying to find this place that she thinks her mother might have disappeared to when she was a little girl, and she has her mom's journal, and she thinks it's cursed. That sounds so interesting, right? Yeah, it's not interesting. Every chapter begins with very bad poetry, and it is very overwritten and I listen, I don't I don't I don't want to just like make this whole video tearing it to shreds, but I do have a Goodreads review. So my Goodreads is linked down below if you want to go and see some more of my thoughts. But there were a lot of things about this that just were not good. So I gave it one star. Don't necessarily recommend that installment in the series, though I'm sure some of the other ones are great. Moving right along, let's talk about my two star reads. This month I had four of them and three of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are Neom by La Vie Tadar, Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. This one really just wasn't for me. I, it's, I don't think it's objectively bad, but it was really not for me and was maybe mismarketed, I think. And I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess by Saki Tsukigami. If you want to hear my thoughts on this and all of the other volumes of manga that I talk about, I'm going to direct you to a really fun video I did, I'll link it up above, where Izzy from Happy For Now picked my TBR 
as a manga newbie and it was really fun. I think she did a great job of picking a wide range of manga for me to try out that I had a variety of reactions to. Some of them I really loved, some of them like this one were less of hits, but go check out the video. It was a lot of fun. And it was a collab where I picked out graphic novels for her to read. So you can also go and watch her video. <laughs> my, uh, y'all, my, my final, my, my final two star read for the month. Okay, listen, uh, I gave it two stars just because it was very entertaining. I was on a live stream over on Izzy's channel for her birthday and we did a dramatic reading of this <laughs> really, really bad, funny erotica. And I gave it two stars because it made me laugh, even though it's absurd. This is Rammed by the Reviews for this book by Leonard Delaney. Give it points for creativity because it is a book that is updated over time as it gets verified <laughs> reviews on Amazon and it integrates the Amazon reviews into the narrative. Um, it was an experience. Then I had one book that got two and a half stars and I talked about this in my mid-month wrap-up but really in that manga vlog that is Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts by Yu Tomofuji, volume one. I also had five three-star reads and four of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. I read a lot of my less successful books in the first half of the month, so it seems. Those books are Into the Wind Racked Wilds by A. Deborah Baker, aka Shauna McGuire. Sweat and Soap, Volume 1 by Kintetsu Yamada. Again, this is one I read for that manga video. The House of Always by Jen Lyons and Trick by Natalia Jaster. Had to change the battery on my camera, but if you want to hear about any of those books, go check out my mid-month wrap-up or check out the manga vlog. My final three-star read of the month is Stone Heart by Katie Robert. This is a prequel novella to the Dark Olympus series that you can download for free along with novellas from a bunch of other authors. So I finally got around to reading this one and I liked it. It was fun and enjoyable. It was just too short to be more than three stars for me. Medusa is sent to assassinate Calypso, but instead ends up falling for her. So a uh, lot of insta-love in this one. Again, it's a novella, so things happen very quickly, but I had a pretty good time with it. Next up, I had two books that got three and a half stars, and I did not talk about either of them previously. The first one is another short story in that collection that Tomi Adeyemi had a short in. This was Persephone by Lev Grossman. I'll be honest, this is probably more of a three star than a three and a half star. Amazon was just doing this really weird thing where for the first day that they were up, they weren't showing any reviews under four stars, and so I did three and a half so I could round it up and try to get it visible. It ended up being fine. Um, it was like a weird thing where my re one star review wasn't showing up. Anyway, it, like after the first day of release, they changed it, but I'm like, it's a little sus. We know that Amazon owns Goodreads, so I feel like that might have been on purpose, but Persephone by Love Grossman. This wasn't anything to write home about, but it was a fun story about a girl who is always bottling up her emotions and they finally break out in a super powered sort of way. Again, it's a short story, not a ton to this, but I enjoyed it. The other book that I gave three and a half stars to was The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. This was selected by some of my patrons as a book that they wanted to see me vlog. So I do have a spoiler free vlog of The Stardust Thief that is available to patrons and also to some channel members. I think the lowest tier of channel members doesn't get access to the extra bonus videos, but anything above that does. So if you're interested in hearing my in-depth thoughts on this, consider joining me in one of those places. There were definitely some things I enjoyed about this book. I think the setting is fantastic. The use of Jinn mythology is really cool. It is a Middle Eastern inspired, Thousand and One Nights inspired debut fantasy novel. Um, I had a fairly enjoyable time reading it. It did keep my attention. However, there are a couple of caveats. One is that this definitely has some pacing issues. It's got a pretty strong opening and it's got a fantastic, 
blockbuster type ending, but it really meanders and drags through the middle. I think part of the problem is that we get a lot of information reveals at the very end, and I think that this book might have done better if those had been paced out through the book a little bit more. Part of that is that it's a, a debut. The other thing about this is The Stardust Thief is an adult fantasy title, but it really reads like YA. And I am a person who gets annoyed <laughs> when people just assume that every fantasy book written by a woman is YA because it's written by a woman. But genuinely, The Stardust Thief reads very young. And if it had been marketed as YA, I probably would have rated it higher. I still think it has some problems. It wouldn't be perfect. But the way that the character work is done I would be more okay with if it was a YA book. The character work is fairly shallow for the most part, and the story as a whole is a little bit surface level. It's not giving us a ton of depth to the themes that it maybe is exploring. I, I don't know. Like, there's a couple of things where I'm like, maybe you're trying to do something here, but I don't really know what it is. We just don't get a lot of nuance, and the characters feel a little one note and sometimes a bit bland. And Again, that is not to say that you can't have dark, deep, complex things in YA fantasy because sometimes you can have those things. What I'm saying is that I don't go into YA fantasy expecting them in the same way that I do from this type of adult fantasy. So yeah, I guess just know that going in. I think if you enjoy YA fantasy, if the, the themes, the story type, the setting appeals to you, I wouldn't dissuade you from reading it. I had a pretty good time with it. The ending is really strong. There's some like, oh my god, what moments. I just wanted more from this. So it ended up being a three and a half star read for me. Moving on to my four star reads, I feel like I'm gonna miss something here because there's just so many of them. I think I have 14 four star reads and 10 of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap up, okay? I read a lot in the first half of the month, y'all, so the books that I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up and gave four stars to are Babel by R.F. Kuang, Blue Flag Volume 1 by Kaito. Again, you can see more about this in my manga vlog. Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo and Danny Pendergast. Making Love with the Land by Joshua Whitehead. Sweat and Soap Volume 2 by Kintetsu Yamada, also in that manga video. The Hellmouth Guardian's Lover by Adriana Herrera. The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, Tread of Angels by Rebecca Roanhorse, and Wotokoi, Love is Hard for Otaku, Volume 1 by Fujita. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> like, that's a lot of four stars that I've talked about other places. I also gave four stars to Bonds of Chaos by Zach Argyle. This is the final book in an indie published fantasy trilogy. I was kindly sent an audio review copy from the author, so thank you so much to Zach for that. I liked a lot of things about this book. In some ways, I think it's a very satisfying conclusion to the trilogy. I love the way that this author writes female characters and has these really beautiful intimate moments in between periods of intense action. There's a lot to like. I do have some criticisms of some of the choices made with the ending of the book. However, they are very spoilery, so I'm not going to talk about them here. I do have a spoiler section of my review on Goodreads where I get into some details about the things that I specifically didn't love about the choices that were made there. I don't think the intent was to be harmful in the ending, but I don't know that the impact of the choices with the ending were fully thought through. So, yeah, that's what I'll say. It was a four star read for me. Overall, I really liked it. I would for sure read more from Zach Argyle in the future. And I think he's doing some really cool things in indie fantasy. Um, but I did have some criticisms. Check Goodreads if you want to hear more. I also gave four stars to Confessor by Terry Goodkind. This is the final main book that I'm reading for the read along with Liana for our year-long <laughs> sort of truth read-along. We have a prequel novella we're reading in December, but this is the last primary book. And I did find it to be a fairly satisfying conclusion given what had come before. 
granted a couple weeks out I'm struggling to remember a lot about it and I'm wondering if maybe I should downgrade it to three and a half stars but I certainly had a better time with this than I have with the last book in the series. So Leanna and I are a little late in being able to talk about it because of the holidays and schedules. Early next week we're going to be doing our live show for Confessor so tune in if you want to hear all of our thoughts. I think I enjoyed this more than Leanna did. I also gave four stars to Eva Evergreen's Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. This was a reread for me. I read it aloud to my kids before bed and it's it's really cute and really charming. I think I did downgrade it slightly since my first read. It's a little different whenever I'm reading it to my kids than when I'm reading it for myself and one thing that stood out to me is that the first part of the book is very slow paced and throughout it I think it gets a little overly descriptive for this age group while there's a lot that I really love about the story and I love the found family and the magic it's really wonderful in a lot of ways I do think it could maybe be pared down for the age group that she's targeting that said still really enjoyed it still four stars and I'm looking forward to reading the second book in the series the final book that I gave four stars to was The Family Game by Katherine Stedman I listened to this as an audiobook from my library and I really enjoyed it. I thought this was a lot of fun. I, as with most thrillers, I feel like it's going to be hit and miss whether people have a good time with this. But honestly, coming up on the holidays, I feel like it could be really cathartic for a lot of people. If you want to read something that makes you feel like, wow, at least my family is not like that. <laughs> This is a thriller following a woman who is a writer. She writes mysteries and she recently got engaged to a man who comes from a very powerful wealthy family and she is meeting her future in-laws for the first time. But there are some disturbing family games and maybe some murder and a lot of things happen. I enjoyed it. I kind of saw the twist ending coming, but that didn't lessen my enjoyment. I don't think this is a perfect book and I can see people's criticisms of it. I don't think they're wrong. I just still enjoyed my time with it, so it was four stars for me. Next up, let's talk about my four and a half star reads. I've got six that I can talk about and three of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are my Mechanical Romance by Alexine Farrell Falmouth, aka Olivia Blake, The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles, and The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal. If you want to hear about any of those, check out my mid-month wrap-up. I also gave four and a half stars to Kimmy Cosmic Volume 1 Escape from Complex 12 by AJ Ampadu and others. This was sent to me for a collaboration for a piece of sponsored content that I did in conjunction with my recent holiday gift guide. If you are looking for holiday gift ideas, bookish holiday gift ideas, especially or like nerdy ones for children, teens, adults, I'm gonna link that video up above. Go check it out. I put a lot of time and effort into it so I hope you'll go watch it and check out all of the amazing places where you can get gifts. But as a piece of sponsored content with that video, I talked about Kimmy Cosmic. This video is not sponsored, but I was sent this comic and I really enjoyed it. So I want to talk about it. This is the first volume in a space adventure with space cowboys and a biracial young woman who is half human, half alien. Her mom was a black woman from Earth and she is coming of age in space, discovering her place in the universe and dealing with the evils of capitalism and it's really fun. It's humorous and lighthearted, definitely appropriate for YA and I would even say middle grade readers, like a lot of middle grade readers could probably pick this up. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four and a half stars. I think it's super cute and it is from a black owned indie comics publisher. So I will link them down below if you want to go and pick up a copy. The question is going to be, can I finish filming before my kids get home from school, like from their after school activities? We'll see. It's going to be a tough one. I also gave four and a half stars to Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. This was a blast. It is upper YA, but I think could appeal to a wide range of people. Contemporary romance. The premise is excellent. If you're into reality TV shows like The Bachelor or Love is Blind and you like the drama, you should totally read this book. If you don't like that, it's not going to be for you. You've got to like the drama because it gives you so much of it. The premise is that this guy is starring on a reality TV show where he tries dating his exes to see if they can rekindle a flame 
And so a bunch of girls come on the show, including one of our heroines who is there for revenge because he cheated on her, and she is forced to room with the girl that he cheated on her with. Except that maybe the girl didn't know he was cheating, and maybe the girls are eventually going to fall for each other instead of for him. So it's a really fun, soapy, melodramatic, sapphic romance and I loved it. I thought it was such a good time. Highly recommend. My final four and a half star read was Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lease. I had this as a digital review copy from NetGalley. It was my first Chloe Lease, and I think this is her traditionally published debut, I believe. I think she's published a lot in the indie space before, and this is her first time being traditionally published. She is known for writing diverse characters, especially with disability and neurodiverse representation, and that was certainly the case here. I really enjoyed this. It took a little while for it to grow on me, but by the end, <sighs> y'all, this was genuinely so swoonworthy. I feel like there were some scenes in this book that were truly romantic, like really romantic. And I read a lot of romance and always enjoy it, but it's not frequently that I read something where I'm like, wow, that was like really romantic. And you get that here. It is a contemporary romance that is loosely inspired by Much Ado About Nothing, which is super fun. I love Much Ado About Nothing. It's my favorite Shakespeare play. And it's the start of what I think is going to be a series of books inspired by different Shakespeare plays, which I'm super, super excited for. But it's also got fake dating. So our sort of Ben and Beatrice stand-ins are pushed together by their friends and family and decide to get back at them by fake dating, except that they quickly come to realize that they genuinely like each other and maybe that's better than revenge. I like the fact that it doesn't take them too long to come to that realization. And in terms of the representation, our heroine is autistic. Apparently this is own voices. I believe Chloe Lise is also autistic and disabled, so it's part of why she writes the characters that she does, but our main character is autistic. Our hero deals with anxiety and I think something else as well. Again, check out my Goodreads review because I think I have more details there, but I really enjoyed this a lot. I would absolutely read more from Chloe Lise and more in the series. Four and a half stars. Moving on, let's talk about my five star reads. This month there were five of them and two of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. And those books were the hits of my manga project, so check out that video. This is Skip and Loafer Volume 1 by me. Saki Takamatsu and Witch Hat Atelier Volume 1 by Kamome Shirahama. So go check out that video. I also gave five stars to Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. <sighs> Man, listen, um, this is YA horror, but is definitely the most intense YA horror I have ever read. It is a lot. So before you go into this, know what you're getting into, check content warnings, because it's, it does not hold back. But it's also amazing. It is by a trans author, and it's set in a dystopian future, following a trans boy on the run from a, from this like, eco-terrorist Christian cult that he was raised in that his mom is still a part of. And part of why he's on the run is because they did medical experimentation on him to turn him into this monster angel. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, but oh my god, it's, it's really good. I had to take a break while reading it. Because I think given my own background coming out of evangelical Christianity, it just brought up some things that I ended up needing to talk to my therapist about. So uh, my situation was not quite the same as his, but um, yeah, but the, it was excellent. It was really, really good. Again, if you want to hear more, check out my Goodreads review and also check out Audrey from Perpetual Pages review. And I don't know if they have a video, but they probably have a video somewhere talking about this because they've got a lot of insight into what this book is doing as a trans person that I appreciated. It's intense, but it's also incredible. Five stars. And this was sent to me from the publisher for review. Thank you so much to them for that because wow, it's amazing. I also gave five stars to Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wobgeshig Rice. This was the last thing that I read in the month of November and it was so good. 
what a way to end it. This is a very quick read. It's not a very long book, but it's incredible. It had been on my TBR for a while, and then I was on reading sprints with Kim from Native Lady Book Warrior for the Skoden Readathon, and she started talking about this book and sold me on it. I was like, okay, I'm downloading it immediately. I already own the audiobook. I just need to put it on my phone and listen to it, and I did, and it's, it's beautiful, and chilling at the same time and just really unlike other things that I've read I quite enjoyed it. So it's kind of a quieter approach to apocalyptic fiction. It's set on a reservation in northern Canada that is quite remote and follows the small Anishinaabe community as they try to survive through an apocalypse. And it's so fascinating and does a great job of having these intense disturbing moments, but also these really quiet, beautiful moments of humanity and family and love. It was great. The writing was lovely. Highly recommend if you haven't read it. It was great. I listened to this on audio. The narration is beautiful. A really fantastic narrator. If you do audiobooks, I might recommend trying it that way. Oh, the camera overheated. We're so close. I feel like my kids are going to be home any moment and I'm so close to the end of this video. My final five star read was Winter Heat by Kristen Kishore. I'm going to be over on Mel's channel. Uh, actually, like it should be up by the time this video goes up, but I'll be doing a live show with Mel from um, a book feed called Mel and Kara from a Wild Book Garden discussing this, but I loved it. This might be my favorite book in the series so far. I, I have a lot of thoughts on this but I don't have time to give them all to you now. So um, if you want to hear my thoughts, either check out my Goodreads review or stay tuned for our live show. I think it's going to be a really interesting discussion. The fact that there was so long between when Kristen Kishore wrote book three in the series and when she came back to write Winter Keep is quite fascinating. And I think she did a good job of having multiple characters of different ages to make it feel inclusive of adult readers who maybe grew up with the series and newer teenage readers. This feels appropriate for teens in the way her other books do, but still feels quite mature in a lot of the themes it's exploring. And I, I did expect nothing less. It was great. I loved it. Lastly, I had three books that I gave six stars to this month, which is what I give to a favorite of the year. Two of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are the Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. This is my first 2023 release. The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories by Ken Liu. This was also a patron pick for a reading vlog. It was the pick for October and I finished it in early November. So I have a vlog for patrons and channel members of this where I am sobbing like this made me cry so much. It was amazing. I loved it. Um, and lastly, I also gave six stars to The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie. This was amazing. This was perfect. The ending was perfect. Savine is everything. Love. Love it. If you want to hear more thoughts on this, go check out the episode on Chapter 3 Podcast where me and Liana discuss it in depth. I will link that up above. If you didn't know, we co-host a podcast together and we did a read-along of the First Law series all year long. We finally finished it and it, it was great. I loved it. I don't know if the stack is gonna fall or how I'm gonna do this for my thumbnail. But wow, so many books, some really incredible ones. Thank you for hanging out with me while I discuss them. I am so impressed that I finished all of this before my kids got home because I didn't expect to do that. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on anything that I talked about. How did you do this month? Did you do Skoden Readathon? Did you do NaNoWriMo? Tell me about your reading month. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. And also know that even though I don't always respond to all of my comments, I do read them all. So I don't always have the bandwidth to respond to comments on every video, but I do always read your comments and it's always really fun to hear your thoughts. So talk to me in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.